In this video, we will continue the series of listening to native speakers in Los Angeles. I analyze the expressions they're using and I teach you some useful, common, everyday idiomatic expressions. We will also review an advanced grammar rule and I will give you some practice sentences and we will learn the correct pronunciation of some difficult words. We have a lot of topics to talk about. Let's get started. You will listen to my conversation with Samantha Grant. She is a celebrity nutritionist. She is well known and well respected in her field. She has appeared in many different talk shows on TV, giving people advice about how to lose weight and how to get healthy and how to feel good. I decided to ask her about what advice she had about how to get healthy and how to lose weight in the year 2020. Many people have New Year's resolutions about losing weight, eating more healthy, and I wanted to ask her her top three tips. I learned some interesting things that I didn't know, and maybe you will too. After you hear the first tip, I will come back and I will teach you the expressions she was using, and then I will give you other example sentences so that you can memorize those expressions and use them in different situations. Okay, let's listen to Samantha. I'm so glad you brought that up because I always say that weight loss should never be the goal. Weight loss is a side effect of getting healthy. When you are healthy, when your body's in homeostasis, when all of your systems are functioning at the optimal level, weight loss is a natural side effect of that. So I just want to say that about the new year because I think we put so much pressure and stress on ourselves every January to do a cleanse or a detox, and those are temporary, fleeting goals that are very hard to maintain. But since you asked what my th top three would be, one, I would say that is to change your mindset, to not look at it as a punishment and something you have to do, like beat yourself up, like really abuse your body and go to the gym every day and not and you know eat carrots. Like that's not the way to do it. Um, so one thing that I find is helpful is to um, just commit to changing one meal a day. For, for instance, the easiest thing to start with is changing your breakfast. I would say start your day with protein. You can make a smoothie with organic pea protein and some frozen berries and you know water or almond milk. And you can actually, one secret that I love to add to a shake is raw spinach. You can put a handful of raw spinach in your shake with some strawberries and I promise you won't taste it. It looks funny, it looks green, but you can't taste the spinach and that's a great way to get more nutrients. So I'd say start your breakfast with always protein because that sets the tone for the day in terms of how your body is going to use and store energy. That's my number one tip, start with a protein breakfast. The first expression that she used is a pretty easy one. I think you probably know this one. It's the phrasal verb to bring up. She said, I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm so glad you brought that up. To bring up means to introduce a subject, to begin talking about a topic. I'm so glad you brought that up. Repeat after me. I'll bring it up at the next meeting. I'll bring it up at the next meeting. You know I don't want to talk about it. Why do you keep bringing it up? Let's say that again. You know I don't want to talk about it. Why do you keep bringing it up? Next, I want you to pay attention to how she pronounced three words. Maybe you confuse these words. Some of my students do. The first one is cleanse. We have the adjective clean or the verb to clean. But in this case, the pronunciation changes. We don't say cleans, it's cleanse. A cleanse is a special diet when you want to clean your body and you maybe drink only water or juice for a specific period of time. That's called a cleanse. To do a cleanse or a detox, and those are temporary, fleeting goals. The next word is detox. Detox. And that means detoxification. To do a cleanse or a detox, and those are temporary, fleeting goals that are very hard to maintain. 
Let's say that again, detox. And the third word is fleeting. Fleeting means lasting for a short time. It's temporary. She said, those are fleeting goals. We put so much pressure and stress on ourselves every January to do a cleanse or a detox, and those are temporary, fleeting goals that are very hard to maintain. You can also say, I had a fleeting thought or a fleeting glance, or you can say, time is fleeting. The next expression is a very common one, beat yourself up. Listen to the way she uses it. One, I would say that is to change your mindset, to not look at it as a punishment and something you have to do, like beat yourself up. If you beat yourself up, you blame yourself, you criticize yourself too much or unnecessarily. You like beat yourself up, you like beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. We use the preposition over. Don't beat yourself up over that. He's really beating himself up over failing the exam. He's really beating himself up over failing the exam. The next word she used has three different meanings. You probably know the first meaning. That's the most common one, funny. When something is funny, it's humorous. But the way she used it is different. Funny also means strange or unusual or weird. Listen to the way she used it. It looks funny, it looks green, but you can't taste the spinach. She said it looks funny. Because the drink is green, it has a strange color, it looks funny. It looks funny, it looks funny. If you say he's a funny guy, that has two possible meanings. One meaning is he makes you laugh. He's a humorous guy, but the other meaning is he's a little bit strange, he's weird, he's a funny guy, or he looked at me in a funny way. And the third meaning of funny is when you're feeling a little sick, you can say, my stomach feels funny, or I feel a little funny today. It means I feel a little bit sick. The next expression is to set the tone for. Let's listen to how Samantha used it. So I'd say start your breakfast with always protein because that sets the tone for the day in terms of how your body is going to use and store energy. To set the tone for something is to establish an attitude or a mood or a feeling about how things are going to continue. You do something in the beginning and the way you do it sets the tone for the rest of the event. Samantha said the way you eat breakfast that sets the tone for the day. Because that sets the tone for the day. Because that sets the tone for the day. The first paragraph can set the tone for the entire story. His funny comment set the tone for the remainder of the meeting. And you notice I didn't say sets the tone because I'm using it in past tense. And the verb is set, set, set. It's an irregular verb. Let's say that again. His funny comment set the tone for the remainder of the meeting. Let's listen to Samantha's second tip. Number two, I would say to make a commitment um, to decrease your sugar intake. So a lot of times we think, or clients will say, well, I don't eat sugar, but they drink wine or they drink juice. These are two really hidden sources of sugar. People don't always equate sugar with alcohol and juice. People think, you know, fruit juice is a healthy food. What they don't realize is probably in a, one glass of orange juice is about eight oranges. And at no time do I think you would sit down and actually eat eight oranges in one sitting. So when you drink the juice, you're actually getting all of the sugar, all of the fructose, and you're getting all of the carbohydrates from the juice. You're not getting any of the fiber that slows down that rush of sugar. So I would say to decrease your liquid sugar, which is juice, because again, people think it's healthy because it's marketed as healthy. The next expression is equate with, equate with. Let's listen to how she used it. People don't always equate sugar with alcohol and juice. People don't always equate sugar with alcohol and juice. When you equate one thing with another thing, 
You consider them to be the same. You believe they are equal. Samantha said that people don't always equate sugar with alcohol and juice, but actually alcohol and juice have sugar, so they should be equated with each other. Let's use equate with in another sentence. Some people equate happiness with having a lot of money. Some people equate happiness with having a lot of money. You shouldn't equate intelligence with wisdom. They're not the same thing. You shouldn't equate intelligence with wisdom. They're not the same thing. I want you to listen to the way she said the next sentence and we will pay attention to the advanced grammar structure that her sentence had. What they don't realize is probably in a, one glass of orange juice is about eight oranges. And at no time do I think you would sit down and actually eat eight oranges in one sitting. She said, at no time do I think. Now, do I think sounds like a question, but it's not a question. This is an inverted word order that is sometimes used for special emphasis. We can use this grammar structure for negative adverbs, for example, never or seldom or not only. Let's practice some sentences with this word order. You can say, I have never heard, or for special emphasis, you can say, never have I heard. Never have I seen such a beautiful thing. Never have I heard such a beautiful voice. So instead of saying, I have never, you can say, never have I. He has never, never has he. I never believed that. Never did I believe that. You can say, we seldom have, or seldom do we have. We seldom have strong earthquakes here. Seldom do we have strong earthquakes here. Let's practice with not only. She not only speaks Spanish, but she also speaks Italian. And for special emphasis, we can say, not only does she speak Spanish, but she also speaks Italian. Wow, I'm really impressed. Let's practice one more example with the word rarely. You can say, I rarely see him or rarely do I see him. I wish I could see him more. Rarely do I see him. Samantha said, at no time do I think that you will actually sit down and have eight oranges in one sitting. And at no time do I think you would sit down and actually eat eight oranges in one sitting. And at no time do I think you would sit down and actually eat eight oranges in one sitting. And she used the expression in one sitting. Let's talk about the meaning of that one. When you do something in one sitting, you do it without stopping until you finish. I can't believe you read the whole book in one sitting. I can't believe you read the whole book in one sitting. The next expression is rush. Let's listen to how Samantha used it. You're not getting any of the fiber that slows down that rush of sugar. The fiber that slows down the rush of sugar. When you have a rush of sugar going through your body, you have an excitement and a feeling of energy because of the sugar. That's called a sugar rush. And you can also have a caffeine rush when you drink a lot of coffee. So a rush is an excitement in your body where your heart is beating faster, usually because of something you drink but sometimes because of drugs too. That's called a rush. I'm very sensitive to caffeine. I feel a caffeine rush after just one cup of coffee. I feel a caffeine rush after just one cup of coffee. Let's listen to Samantha's final tip. So protein breakfast, cut the juice, and number three is to get some movement in every day doesn't mean you have to go and run on a treadmill for an hour a day every day at the gym. No one has that much time in a day and you're gonna lose momentum and you're gonna drop off after a couple of weeks. But just movement, and that could be 20 minutes at lunch. Maybe you eat lunch at your desk and you can only get out for 20 minutes, do a 20 minute walk. And then maybe do a 20 minute walk after dinner. Studies show that we do not have to do a 40 minute sustained cardio workout to reap the benefits of fat loss. If you can move a little through your day, it will make a big difference.
Okay. Okay, so let's summarize those three tips. The first one you said, have protein for breakfast. The second one you said, remove sugar from the diet. And the third one you said, move your body. Yeah. That's doable. Yeah. Those are easy changes. The sugar one is probably the hardest one for most people, but one secret benefit of having that protein for breakfast is that you do have less sugar cravings through the rest of the day. And it's usually the first like 10 days of eliminating sugar that are the hardest. So if you can get through that hump the first 10 days, then it will be much easier for you to maintain that. Um, and, and just, you know, eat your sugars, like eat your fruit sugars. Don't drink them because if you eat them, you're going to get a lot more nutritional value. You're going to get that good, healthy fiber and it won't impact your sugar cravings as if you were drinking um, a glass of orange juice every morning. She said, cut the juice, cut the juice, cut the juice. To cut means to reduce the amount or the level of something to decrease. I lost weight by cutting calories. I lost weight by cutting calories. These stores are drastically cutting prices. These stores are drastically cutting prices. The next expression is to get something in. Listen to the way she used it. To get some movement in every day. To get some movement in every day. She said to get some movement in. To get something in means to find time to do something in your very busy schedule. To manage to do something even though you're very busy. She tries to get a nap in while the baby's sleeping. She tries to get a nap in while the baby's sleeping. I like to get a workout in during my lunch break. I like to get a workout in during my lunch break. I find time to work out. Let's listen to the way she used the expression drop off. It may be different than the meaning that you're familiar with with the word drop off. You're going to drop off after a couple of weeks. You're going to drop off after a couple of weeks. She said, you're going to drop off after a couple of weeks. And that means you're going to exercise less after a couple of weeks. In the beginning, you will be really excited, but then a few weeks later, you will probably drop off and not do it as much. So if something drops off, it decreases and it declines. Business dropped off at that restaurant after they hired the new chef. Business dropped off at that restaurant after they hired the new chef. And she said to reap the benefits. Studies show that we do not have to do a 40 minute sustained cardio workout to reap the benefits of fat loss. Studies show that we do not have to do a 40 minute sustained cardio workout to reap the benefits of fat loss. And that simply means to get the benefits. To reap is what you collect at the end. To benefit from something. The next expression that she used is to get through the hump. So to get through the hump is to get through the most difficult part and to be on the other side of it. A camel has a hump. So the hump is the top part. And after you get through that part, you start going downhill and everything becomes easy. So we say to get over the hump or to get through the hump. The most difficult part is behind us and now everything is easier. Samantha said, it's really difficult to not have any sugar for the first 10 days, but after that, you will get over the hump and then you will no longer want to eat sugar. So if you can get through that hump the first 10 days, so if you can get through that hump the first 10 days, it's been a very difficult week, but I think we're over the hump. It's been a very difficult week, but I think we're over the hump. Samantha used the word cravings and it won't impact your sugar cravings. A craving is something that you want very much and the verb is to crave. When you have a strong desire for something, especially food, you can say, I really have a craving for chocolate today. And she was talking about sugar cravings. 
and it won't impact your sugar cravings, and it won't impact your sugar cravings. If you would like to find out more about Samantha and her work, you can visit her website at samanthafgrant.com. I'm filming this video on Martin Luther King Day. It's a holiday here in the United States. So I leave you with this quote by Martin Luther King. I like it very much. It inspires me, and I hope it inspires you. Whatever your life's work is, do it well. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could do it no better. He says, work hard, do the best job you can possibly do, no matter what you're doing. And I think that applies to my job, and I think it applies to learning English or anything else we try to do. If you like these types of videos, please let me know in the comments and I will continue to make more similar to this one. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com.